Funding for Off 90 is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. <laughs> Cruising your way on this episode of Off 90. Take a trip to the past as we visit a town embedded in history, the village of yesteryear in Owatonna. Meet an artist who gets her inspiration from the fields and farms of rural America, Glencoe painter Bonnie Moore. And middle school students with a passion for playing music prepare for a performance with the Southeastern Minnesota Honor Band. It's all just ahead, Off 90. Hi, I'm Barbara Keith. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Off 90. Have a hankering to relive some of those good old days, even if you've never actually lived in them? The village of yesteryear in Owatonna can provide the vittles for your hunger of the past. Stroll down the boardwalk, and as you step into the buildings that were constructed at the turn of the last century, you'll be stepping into the past. is a great picture of our local history from about 1850 through 1920. We've got a 16 structure pioneer village. It began in 1962 with the arrival of the Seiko Church and throughout the years uh, has become home to many historic buildings in Steele County. Two of the buildings are new construction, the fire hall and the farm machinery building. not only a picture of our local county history, I think it's a great reflection of Minnesota's history uh, in that same time frame. And we're seeing more and more um, the removal of, you know, the knowledge of the past. Welcome to the village of yesteryear. I'm Jerry Ganfield and I'm a volunteer tour guide and uh, on the board of directors of the Steele County Historical Society which operates the village of yesteryear here in Owatonna. I was asked to join the Steele County Historic Society many years ago, but I resisted because I was a member elsewhere in the county in Iowa where my family homesteaded in 1852. But then I realized my home was here, so um, when I was asked to join the board in 1998, I said yes, and I've been a volunteer tour guide ever since. We're standing in front of the uh, Donnell House, uh, which was built in 1868-69 when Mark Hill Donnell came from Buxton, Maine um, to Winona first in 1865, then to Owatonna, and he became the first public um, school superintendent uh, for the state of Minnesota, which he served for three years. He had been a lawyer uh, out east and um, headmaster of two academies, so he had a great interest in education. Um, and he brought his family, his wife Sarah and their five children, to Owatonna and built this house in 1868-69. We're in the parlor, which was uh, used only on formal occasions. The family would have had it closed off, except when they had visitors or a public event. And in this room they had their wedding anniversary, their 50th wedding anniversary, which was written up uh, in large style in the local paper. Um, th this is also where Mark Hill, Donnell's funeral was held, and the wedding of Mark Boothby, his son. So it was a formal uh, room, um, and we have more formal furniture. We have the portraits of um, Dr. Ford and his wife, who was um, president, uh, headmaster of Pillsbury, uh, at a time when he was writing about the needs of the school. 
We have a square grand piano, which was a birthday gift for uh, Mary Morford uh, on her 10th birthday from her father, who was a hardware merchant. We also have an Edison phonograph here um, that was given by local people. And what's um, really unique about it is we have the cabinet that holds a hundred of the cylinders that were used on it. And the Edison being um, the popular uh, stereo of 1880. We're in front of the St. Wenceslas of Moravia Catholic Church, which was the first building that established the village of yesteryear in 1962. And it came from about seven miles southwest of Owatonna. It was a mission church of the Sacred Heart Parish. Let's take a look inside. The Sacred Church was built in 1891, and the altar you see before you was um, brought to the church in 1910. The building sat about 75 people. Originally, the men would be on one side, the women on the other. The stove up front would actually be in the center, so it would be equally warm. And you do have all the original furnishings, uh, including the Stations of the Cross. Um, <clears throat> one of our most important paintings is in the back of the church because it is the painting of uh, the Duke of Bohemia, Wenceslas who was credited with uniting the Bohemians uh, together and Christianizing them. Unfortunately, his brother assassinated him on the steps of the church, and he later became a saint. But that's where the name of the church comes from, St. Wenceslas. When we walk from building to building, we'll see lots of names on our boardwalk. And that's a fundraiser for the Historical Society. Uh, people can uh, put their names on or put names of somebody in, in memorial uh, to them. Um, businesses can also put their business name or whatever they'd like. Um, but it's a, a means of fundraising that has been with the village since 1984. Now we're at the general store. Um, kids from uh, our sixth grade and other classes here in Owatonna love coming here because number one, you can buy penny candy or nickel candy. Um, but it really takes a step back in time from the grocery stores of today. Come on inside. General store was just that. It, this uh, simulates kind of the uh, Kelly Company um, general store in Owatonna, which at the time was called the Dayton's of Owatonna because it sold everything from uh, dresses and dry goods uh, to your groceries, a lot of your vegetables, a lot of your canned goods. And we point out that everything was pretty much behind a counter. You had to come in with your list and then the storekeeper would put it together while you waited or if you went off to do some other errands, would have it all ready for you and tally up the, the bill and have it ready for you when you came back from some other errand in town. I see tourists from all the United States and two weeks ago I had someone from Paris and I've had them from Sweden <clears throat> and I've had them from Russia. Anything and everything, you know, anything from uh, senior citizens to children. We've had people from uh, all over the United States and uh, overseas that have come here and toured the village. So it's a great cross section. The world is pretty small these days. <laughs> Artists find beauty in mountaintops or misty coastlines. 
You won't find many of those in our neck of the woods, but you will find the scenes that painter Bonnie Moore immortalizes on her canvas. Her paintings bring the rural landscapes of Glencoe to life, turning everyday moments into something to be treasured. When people look at my art, they are seeing real life, real America. I don't try to paint anything sugar-coated or magical in my work. My work is really the cross-section of rural America. I've always said anybody who looks at my work knows exactly who I am because I paint who I am. You know, I paint the things that I love and I paint the things that are um, really right in my backyard. I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a dairy farm, one of eight children. What we learned as kids on the farm is what has stayed with me my entire life, and that is that, that there's beauty in just the simple joys around you and uh, the things that money can't buy, really, you know, the rising sun and the newborn calf and working together as a team to get the crop in, working as a team to get the chores done, and, and, and there's just this underlying sense of accomplishment that comes along with um, working hard and doing your part. There are a few of us who have been lucky enough to be born and grow up on a farm and, and that's a part of our heritage, it's just a part of our roots and you know I think our job is to teach the rest of the world. I mean we're responsible to raise the crop, to feed the world and I think it's our job to teach people about the importance of agriculture. I'm a self-taught artist, so everything I do I've learned on my own and through um, self-study. I started out painting almost 25 years ago and really in the, in the very beginning started painting cows because I grew up on a dairy farm. And then in the last 10 years started to branch out into the other sites of rural America. And uh, I guess most recently in the last five, six years I've started painting inspirational art as well. When you grow up on a farm you, and learn to appreciate really what hard work can do, it can take you anywhere. It can take you to be an astronaut or a doctor or go on in life and, um, uh, you know, dreaming the dream and then going out to achieve it. And um, for me, it all started in rural America. It all starts with our roots that are right here. I think securing those images on canvas and promoting it, number one, is a, a commitment and a testimony to my love of agriculture and the lifestyle that we live. I, as an artist, try to capture what's in my heart and the things that I love and the things that I grew up with and the things that I knew. And fortunately, there's a lot of people who connect with that and have a, have a love for that as well. I, I think the more complex our world gets and the faster we move and the more social media takes over, the more we long to hang on to simple things that bring us a feeling of love and a feeling of peace. God gave me a skill and I'm, I'm doing what I think I'm supposed to do and playing my part of promoting agriculture and the essence of it and uh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful way to live. It's a big honor to be selected by your conductor to take part in the Southeastern Minnesota Honor Band. Each year, the most talented and dedicated musicians from middle schools in southeastern Minnesota are chosen to meet and put on a performance that's guaranteed to be a memorable experience for the students as well as for the audience. We're in Austin, Minnesota, and we're here with the Southeast Minnesota Honor Band. Trumpet. Trumpet. 
We have students from area schools that come together to make a wonderful day of music. We have a sixth, seventh grade band and an eighth and ninth grade band. And we have two guest clinicians that come in and work with students throughout the day, along with some band directors who work sectionals with kids. And they put on a concert tonight at 5 o'clock. Oh, it's going to be awesome. This is going to be full of energy, um, just rehearsals all day, some fun, some social time uh, around the lunch, and uh, a good opportunity for students to share, share their love of music. Well, first you go and you rehearse with everyone, and then they give you some advice on what you could do better. It looks like a good learning experience and a lot of fun. Well, I guess it'll be boring in between breaks, and then it'll be exciting during the concert. I thought it'd be really fun to play in a big band with lots of people and to learn more about my flute. In their own bands, they just hear each other. This is a chance to get together with kids from other schools. They have complete instrumentation, all the instruments that they may not have in their own band. They play the whole day, work really hard, and the concert is just awesome for the kids. It's great. The seat's about 1,700 if you go clear all the way to the back, Great. so it's good size. I founded the Southeast don't... Minnesota Middle Level Honor Band 16 years ago, and I'm co-directing with yeah. Nino Terrara. Fantastic. Are we ready? So, uh, yeah, I think so. If you're in high school, there are lots of opportunities for honor bands in all states and things that way, but I was teaching at middle school, and there, wa there weren't those types of same opportunities. So we just started it here just to give basically our kids that experience, but then also we have such great facilities here with our Dalton Auditorium that it just made sense for us to host it for a lot of the area schools. Welcome to the 16th annual Southeast Minnesota Middle Level Honor Band. We have two groups of a little over 100, so around 215 students total. Six seventh graders go over to the rehearsal room, that's the band room. We split them into two groups based on their grade in school. So we have a sixth and seventh grade band, as well as an eighth and ninth grade band. How about the alto saxophones? And then throughout the day they have sectionals which are split into different groups that they play in. So maybe the low brass or the saxophones or the flutes. And so let's warm up. I'm going to have everybody just stand up here for a second. Uh, let's do a constant deep flat scale. Three, four. I teach the sixth graders and the seventh graders in Owatonna, and I've brought 14 kids down. They have a lot of fun. It's amazing. I tell them about it. You're going to be playing for a whole day. And they kind of look at me strange, of course. But as soon as I get somebody else in the room that's, been, that's done it, and, they, and the kids talk to each other, and they, they really like it. It's a lot of fun for them. They see the growth immediately from when they begin, when they get together as a group, to when they perform tonight. It's very fulfilling for them. It's like fun, but it's really hard because you have to work at it to get it like all exactly right. Sometimes it's very overwhelming playing in a large group when you're meeting together the first time. Usually a first rehearsal is not as pretty sounding, so when we can get together as a sectional, it's really valuable because we can hear what we sound like as a section. And then when we get together as a group, it's like we've already had one rehearsal. I was working with the 8th grade, ninth grade trombones. We get the music about a month ahead of time, and then when we get down here, we do separate just to go over little spots and talk about specific instrument things. And then we put them all back into the large band and let it rip. Oh, so low! Would that mean one of us needs to play it? Do the music very well? I'll play. I'll try okay. it. I teach band at St. Mary's School in Owatonna. It kind of reinforces their, their enjoyment of music, that music is something that you can do your whole life and that you can get together with a bunch of strangers and still make music. I was working with a 6-7 band and the 8-9, coaching them up on the percussion parts. One, two, ready, go. I actually like the younger kids because they're really innocent and they're like eager to learn. And sometimes you work with high schoolers and like, all right, fine, I'll do it. But you know, six, seven kids are like, yay, music. So that's fun. One, two, ready, go. Da, 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 da. The kids talk about it. They wear their t-shirts to school the rest of the year. They're talking about how much fun it was. They can't wait to go next year. 
We also hear that from other directors about how it was a boost for their top kids as well and they're looking forward to coming back next year as well. I get my kids learning more and, and they come back with much more knowledge than they had before and I sprinkle them back into my band and, and they, they lead everybody else much further than, than we were getting before that. It's so fast, we learn all this new stuff, five songs in one day, it's just like to change it up, like fast pace, it's really fun, it's just all music all day. I just kind of enjoy the atmosphere. I mean, at our school we have three baritones, but when you get here you instantly have six baritones, so it's a lot more of that feel and you can hear your part a lot more. I really like it. You get to meet a bunch of new people that are like at the same level you are. It's like your lips get really tired and um, you get a good workout. Da, 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 da. From a director da, standpoint, you see the cream of the crop. And every band program is so unique. You know, some of them get banned every day. Some of them get banned once a week. So it's neat to see them all come together, you know, from the small schools and the big schools. And I think this is an opportunity for those high flyers to get together with the high flyers from other schools and to have an opportunity to make some, some really good music. So it's, it's a really fun day for them. And it's fun for us too. I mean, I just get to come and wave my arms around and these kids are great players and put them together, it's fun. I want to get out of being more not nervous to play in front of all these people that I don't know and to play with people that I haven't met before and have a good concert. And set, go! I learned like how to become like play as a group instead of just more as like a section or an individual and I think that'll help me later on in high school. Melody people pick up to 29. Ready? And one, two, three. My name is Michael Buck. I am a professor of music and education at Augsburg College in Minneapolis. And I'm here working with the 8th and 9th grade honor band, and it's been a fantastic day. Okay, thank you. Can I hear you three guys play it, please? They're excited about learning, they're very uh, eager, uh, and they, for many of them this may be their first time, so it's real important that they come here and have a good experience and see what other kids their age are doing and uh, get a chance to make music together. And yeah, we've come a long ways since those first notes. I'll look up, I'll go like this, set. <laughs> It's a tiring and exhausting day, but it's a wonderful day, and I, I hope the kids are having fun. It's sure been a treat to work with them. We have about four hours of rehearsal, which is a long time to play, and they have to be kind of careful that they pace themselves so that they don't get tired out. And some of them were starting to get a little tired here toward the end, so we actually took a break, and it's a good time to do that. Welcome to Knowlton Auditorium here in Austin High School. Kids have been working very hard today. It's a little warm, a little sticky, and especially in the band room over there. And they have some wonderful music to share with us this afternoon. So without any further ado, I'd, I'd like to introduce to you the 6th and 7th grade band and their clinician, Mrs. Geneva Fitzsimmons.
Before you now are the 8th, 9th grade band. Um, they've been working mostly here on the stage. We'll turn it right over to Dr. Michael Buck and the 8th and 9th grade band. I feel like I've done my job if I can get kids to understand that music doesn't just end at high school when you hang up your tennis racket or whatever you do and then go off to college, that music is something that continues and you don't have to be a music major to enjoy music in college or as an adult. That's all for this episode. See you next time. Off 90. Funding for Off 90 is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.